Hey racer fans, thanks for checking in. Our weekly look back on open wheel racing history. The good guys, the tough guys, the best guys. Today, we're going to talk about this young man, Dwayne Poncho Carter Jr. Here he is with his dad, Dwayne Carter, a hell of a race driver in the early 50s, out in front of the old pagoda at the Speedway. And even though Poncho grew up in a racing family, his traditional way to the back to USAC and the Speedway wasn't. He was a part-time driver, going to college full-time. But in 1972, he decided to come back to USAC, started running midgets full-time, won the USAC Midget Championship in 72. It was also in the early 70s when Gary Bentonhausen and Larry Dixon ruled the USAC Sprint Car Division, the toughest division in all racing. Those were the two guys that won the championships in a lot of the races. And if you were going to beat somebody, you had to beat them. Well, right here, Mr. Poncho Carter and Mr. Steve Stapp teamed up. Stapp was a good race driver in his own right. Buzzy Dobbin Chevrolet sponsored their car. They were the 72 sprint car champions. And suddenly, there's a new sheriff in town. This guy's, Poncho, is suddenly the guy that you have to contend with. And what you really had to contend with him were on the high banks. Because nobody, here he is racing his brother Dana at uh, at. Winchester. Nobody was better at Salem and Winchester than Poncho in a sprint car and a midget. Nobody. His father was very good too, so he inherited those genes. But a lot of guys didn't like Winchester and Salem. A lot of good race drivers didn't even run there sometimes. So that helped. That really helped his momentum. He's a sprint car champ in '72. He's a sprint car champ in '74. And in 1974, he also gets his first chance at the Indy 500, where he runs seventh and he's rookie of the year. And you're thinking. Okay, he's the next great thing. He's going to be a multiple Indy winner. He's probably going to be snapped up by Roger Penske. He'll be a national champion. I mean, this guy's going to be one of the best. Well, he was one of the best, but he never, ever reached those heights in an Indy car for different reasons, but he never drove for Penske, for example. However, he's driving for Dan Gurney. Gurney didn't have the best car in 1976, 77, 78. He was kind of a transition period, but Poncho's trying to, he's working with it. They're trying to get a little bit better. He's testing at Phoenix in 1977. Crashes coming off of turn four. Well, in those days, there was no concrete wall. There was certainly no safer barrier. There was just an armco with a bunch of posts for support. Poncho hits that, has a horrible crash, just shatters his pelvis, crushes his sciatic nerve in his right leg, loses a bunch of blood. He's in the hospital in Phoenix, and Dr. Steve Alvey gets him transferred from Phoenix to Indianapolis because the guys in Phoenix said, hey, not only is this guy never going to race again, he's probably not going to walk again. So Steve always like, we'll see about that. They bring him back here, put him in an extensive therapy rehab program. Three months and two weeks to the day that he was hurt at Phoenix, he's, he's limping out to get in a sprint car at Indianapolis Raceway Park for a USAC sprint car race, which he wins. And what, what made it really impressive was he, his, the way his injuries were, he couldn't use the, the, the traditional throttle you know, the in and out operation of the throttle where your, your ankle's hinged, he had to use his leg muscle and just push the throttle straight down so they had to hook up a completely special deal just to use the throttle so he could push it up and down. He wins his comeback race and you're thinking this guy, is, the sky's the limit if, if this guy can overcome this and do so well already. He's, he's an IndyCar contender, he's not a winner, he finally wins his first IndyCar race and his only IndyCar race in the 1981 Michigan 500. He's on the pole for Indy in 1985, but what makes it, his, this story really interesting is, is that because of his injury, Pancho, you know, not that he was a great road racer, but it really limited his ability to road race at all. And those were, that was a change in the guard. That's when Cart was taken over and USAC was getting kicked to the curb. And road racing was becoming more and more prevalent. So he was basically a noble track specialist. But he was still a badass on the pavement and on sprint cars and midgets, tough to beat just about anywhere. He also won the 78 Dirt Car Championship. And I think when you look at Poncho's body of work in his career, uh, when I was working at Speed, I did a, a, a top ten of the best sprint car drivers I'd ever seen. And yeah, I saw Jan Opperman and Bubby Jones, and nobody was better on the dirt. And Steve Chassie was really good on the pavement, and Tom Bigelow was good on both, and Rich Vogler was good on everything. But Poncho was the best guy I ever saw all around. Hard slickies, big cushion racetracks, high bank, you know, little bull rings, it didn't matter. He was that good. So I rated him number one. A.J. Foyt screamed at me the next week and said, you don't know anything about sprint car racing. Troy Rutman's number one. Well, I never got to see Troy Rutman. He might have been, but in my era, Poncho was the best I ever saw. And to think that he won four USAC championships, the pole at Indy, and, and just worldwide respect for his toughness coming back from the injury that he did, 
uh, says a lot about who he was and, and his character. But the other thing about Pancho was he was not the world's nicest guy when he was racing. He was he had had a real edge to him, and he didn't really care if you liked him or not. He was out there to kick your ass, and he didn't really care. But since he's retired, he's been coming to our lunches on Fridays with Coonsman and Bubby Jones and Merle Bentonhausen and, and all the old guard, and he's really lightened up, and he's pretty entertaining, and uh, he's prone to tell lies just like the rest of us. How great we were. In his case, though, he really was that great. And uh, it was certainly, in that era, there was probably nobody better in a sprint car or midget than Pancho Carter from probably 1972 to 1980. And he overcame an amazing handicap and never slowed him down. And he's this week's subject as tough guys and good guys. And sorry, AJ, but Pancho's still the best I ever saw in a sprint car. This is Robert Miller for Racer.com. Thanks for watching.